yours. If you got vacation time that you'd like to transfer into my account, I don't know if that's legal or not, but I'll take it. All right. Let's pray as we go into God's word this morning. Father, we thank you for everyone that is gathered here today. They are loved by you. Everyone that can hear my voice right now, you died for. You love them. And we declare now in Jesus' name that Satan's plan to destroy them ends today, right now. That no weapon formed against these people will prosper. I thank you, God, that you, you even protect them from themselves. Themselves, that carnal, sinful nature that tries to rise back inside of them, God, we pronounce it dead right now in Jesus' name. And we declare that these people live by your spirit, God, that they're, they're in love with you because you are in love with them. And they're done with the things of the world, God. They have separated themselves as holy people, God, sanctified people, lovers of God and not lovers of this world. I thank you that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimonies, and they did not love their lives, Father God, and they were willing to die for you. I speak peace in every heart right now in Jesus' name. I speak peace to depression now in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak peace to those who are being afflicted by demonic spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, we take authority over you right now in the name of Jesus Christ and I command you to loose them and let them go. May every ear open right now that you might hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church today. May every broken heart and heavy heart be healed right now in Jesus' name. Those who suffered abuse as children who still carry those scars and wounds, may they be set free right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who have suffered the loss of a loved one and still carry grief in their hearts, God, Lord, don't let them grieve too long. Long, but there's a season of grieving. But Lord, you, you say that we don't grieve as the world grieves, as those who have no hope. So Father, right now, bring healing to this house. Everyone lift your hands all over the building right now. Just lift your hands. Bring healing. Bring healing, God. You know what they're all going through right now, God. Bring healing by your spirit. You know what they're going through. You know what they're experiencing. You know that they're tired. You know that they're afraid. You know that some of them are ashamed, God, but not here. Your shame is not welcome here. God loves you. And no matter what you've done, he's willing to forgive you if you're willing to repent of your sin. Save us, Jesus. Time is running out. Time is running out. Time is running out. You must be born again. You must be born again. For, for flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You must be born again. Put your faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He will set you free. There is not too much pain. There is not too much shame in which Jesus can't reach through and set you free. He wants to set somebody free this morning. He wants to set somebody free this morning. There's not too much pain. There's not too much shame. There's not too much darkness in which his light can't penetrate. Let the love of God overcome your souls right now. Reach for Jesus. Just call his name. Say Jesus. Just say his name. Jesus. We call upon your name. Jesus. You are the son of God. You are the bright and morning star. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are the redeemer. You are the lamb of God. You are our salvation. You are our peace. You are our love, our first love. You 
you loved us before we even thought about loving you. You loved us when we were in love with sin. You still loved us. While we were yet sinners, you died for us. Be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Every single one of you, be free in Jesus right now. Be free in Jesus. Listen, some of you are worried about finances. Let it go. The word says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Jesus. Church, can you say his name? Jesus. It's why we are in this building right now. It's all about Jesus. If it's not about Jesus, then we shouldn't be here. It's all about Jesus. Jesus, Yeshua, 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 the Son of God. Oh, do you believe that Jesus is real? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus is who he said he is? Do you believe that Jesus is a healer, then be healed right now. Come on, right now, you can be healed right now if you believe that Jesus is a healer. Just say, Jesus, heal me. Heal me, Jesus. I believe that you are a healer. I believe that you are a redeemer. I believe that you put my life back together. I believe that you receive me when I say I'm sorry. Lord, I thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for your grace. Lord, I thank you that you will not turn me away. Jesus, Jesus, wash away my sin. The blood of Jesus, wash away my sin. Some of you are stuck in patterns of sin, of sinful behavior, and you don't know how to get out of it. You've tried your best. You feel so dirty and so ashamed, but I'm here to tell you that if you call on his name, that the blood of Jesus will set you free from any addiction that you have, but you've got to call his name. All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus. Oh, I wish I could convince you to just say his name. Jesus. Put that name on your lips, church. Jesus. Just begin to worship him. It's not about church services. It's about the presence of God. It's about Jesus being in our midst. He said, where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, that I will be there. So he's here right now. Touch the hem of his garment right now. By faith, you can touch the hem of his garment and he will dry up your kidney disease. He will lower your blood pressure. He will heal your eyesight. He will take away your depression. Some of you have been broken hearted over and over again. You've put your trust in relationships only to see your heart thrown into a blender and garbage disposal over and over over again so it makes you leery of entering into new relationships because you've been hurt so many times and while you are hopeful the pain and fear still speaks to you but we silence the fear right now in Jesus name for the word of the Lord says I have not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind his name is Jesus and he's Real. Let him be real to you in this moment. Make Jesus Christ your focus right now. See him high and lifted up. He's not in a manger. He's not on the cross. He's not in the tomb. He is seated 
sit next to the Father in heaven. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and his name is Jesus. And at that name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What's that name even mean to you? What's the name of Jesus mean to you? When you hear that name, what happens in your soul? When you hear that name, do you come alive? When you hear that name, are you lifted up out of the mire? Are you lifted up out of worry and out of depression? Who is Jesus to you? Is he the one when he says, come, walk across the water, that you can look at him and you can walk across every impossibility that you're going through in your life as long as you keep your focus on Jesus? Jesus. It's got to be. It's absolutely got to be all about Jesus. If you put anything in front of Jesus, it ceases to be about him anymore. He will not be second in your life. He must be your first love. He must be your first love. Some of us are just in love with church. In love with singing these songs and fellowshipping together because we like the company of others. But that doesn't save your soul. Your salvation is in Jesus alone. Jesus. 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 and in the earth and under the earth. At that name, demons tremble at that name. Some of you, I wonder if you could even say Jesus right now. Some of you, you could be so oppressed by the enemy that he won't even let you say the name. So it's not that you're ignoring me and being disobedient to me when I'm saying, say, Jesus. It's that sometimes there's so oppression that's so heavy on your life that you can't even utter the name. So you need to even test that right now. Can you even say Jesus? Can you even let that, that name flow out of your mouth right now? Can you call upon his name without fear and without worry? Man, like that's the name that saves you. That's the name that cleanses us of our sin. That's the name of God in the flesh, Jesus. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Maybe some of our problem is that we know about Jesus, but we don't know Jesus. Oh, my goodness. We want to know you. Church, say this with me. Jesus, we want to know you, not just about you. Jesus, be my friend. Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus. Be my Savior. Jesus, be my everything. Come on. It's all about Jesus. Woo! It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. You got to let everything else fall. Everything else you've been worrying about, everything else you've been thinking about, it all just has to move for a minute. Sometimes we become hoarders of things, hoarders of our problems, hoarders of worldly things, and we just can't find Jesus anymore. And maybe that's why he says, cast your cares on me because I care for you. So in this moment, Lord, I pray for a divine and 
supernatural release of all of our cares and concerns that take our eyes off of you. May every distraction fall to the ground right now. And may you alone be high and lifted up. Jesus, we want to see you again. We're tired of worrying about money. We're tired of worrying about politics, the economy, race relations, family issues, diseases. We're, we're, we're moving all of those things out of the way because every name is under your name. And we're raising Jesus back to his rightful place. Forgive us for our idols. Forgive us for spending more time in our phone than in your presence. Forgive us for gossiping. Forgive us for our hunger for the things of this world to where we consume so much of it that our appetite for godly things is so small. Your word says man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So, Father, as we go into your word right now, we desire to eat of you. We desire for life to come into our being. I ask that you move me out of your way, God. I present myself as a living sacrifice to you to be a vessel that feeds your sheep. And may faith come by the hearing of this word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Church, can you say amen? amen? Let's give Jesus some praise. Praise God. Mother Fields, I had a dream about you. Yesterday morning, I woke up. Can you just stand, please? Yesterday morning, I woke up. And I was praying over you, and I was praying in the spirit. And I know God was doing something for you, so I know he has something for you today. So can you just lift your hands right where you are? Church, just begin to pray for Mother Fields right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life and strength over her right now. In Jesus' name, I speak to the pain in that body and command it to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, fill her with your strength. Fill her with your peace. Fill her with your purpose. Father, I thank you that the enemy tried to leave her for dead. But, Lord, you were there because your, her life is hidden in you. So, Jesus, we just speak the fullness of every blessing in your word over her right now. And whatever was supposed to be released in that dream, may it be released under her right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's get into the word. So excited to be in a new series um, and this one is entitled Jesus Beings, because that's who we are and what we are. Now, I know that we are human beings, homo sapiens, those that walk upright. No, we did not come from monkeys. If you want to say that you're related to a monkey, that's on you. But we did not come from monkeys. We came from the image of God, not the image of a monkey, all right, but the image of God. So uh, while we are human beings in the natural sense, more importantly, we are Jesus beings. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the only source of eternal life. It's in him we live and we move and have our being. So the word Christian has become really watered down, like anybody can be a, 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 say that they are a Christian now. Even those who live lifestyles outside of biblical truth and principles can claim that they are Christians. But not everybody is a Jesus being. A Jesus being is those of us who are born again and we have received new life in Jesus Christ. For the word says, uh, let's go to Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 34. Say this with me, church. My life is hidden in Christ. I am 
a Jesus being. When I say you're a Jesus being, when we claim that we are Jesus beings, what we are saying is that it is in him that we now live. We get our being from him. We get our life from him. Our hope, our joy, our salvation, everything comes from him now. So we no longer live unto ourselves, unto our sinful natures. We have a new nature in Christ. We are Jesus beings, and we can shake up the world when we understand that. We're going to Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 34, and it says this. So, well, first of all, hello. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. All right. Any first-time visitors here? Your first time here in the building? Any first time? God bless you, brother. Good to see you. Frankie, welcome again for the first time. Did I miss some? Oh, hello. What is your name? Heather. Heather, welcome. God bless you, and we hope that you all, we know that you will receive something from this word today by faith. So we're in Acts chapter 17, verse 22 through 34, and it says this. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious. What were they? Very religious. Very religious. And that could be our problem in America today, that we are very religious. But there's more to God than just being religious. Religion does not get you into heaven. Salvation through Jesus Christ gets you into heaven. Being recreated after the image of Jesus, being a Jesus being. I feel like I'm going to preach myself happy today. And if you don't want to get happy, I'll take yours and your vacation time. Jesus being, come on now, my life source. He has become our life source now. Like, it's not about Damien and what he can provide and do anymore. The limitations of the flesh have been broken off, and we have become Jesus beings. He is our source of strength. Even when we are weak, we can declare that we are strong. Why? Because we have our being in Jesus now. I'm not limited to the DNA of Edward and Shirley Tibbs anymore. I've got a divine identity in Jesus Christ. I am now a Jesus being. He is my source of strength, my source of joy, my source of peace. Even when the doctors can't figure it out, some of you have had encounters with death, but because your being is in Jesus, you're alive now. You don't know how many times the doctors have stood over people and scratched their heads and say, we don't know what to do, and Jesus has just move out of my way. This one is mine, all right? Jesus beings. So we're not just religious people. The religion has torn this world up. 7,000 denominations, 600 churches, and all supposed to represent just one man, Jesus Christ. So religion can get us in trouble. He said, men of Athens, I notice that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines. And one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. This God whom you worship without knowing, remember I said some of us know about Jesus but don't know Jesus? Come on, you got to leave that category of knowing about Jesus and you better have a personal relationship with Jesus, okay? This God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. Verse 24. Now he opens up a resume and begins to tell them about God. Listen to what he said. He is the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples. And human hands can't serve his needs, for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything, and he satisfies every need. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Church, say this with me. He is not far, is not far. from me. 
verse 28, listen to this. This is what the whole series is built on. For in him we live and move. The New Living Translation says exist, but the King James Version says have our being. Church, say this with me by faith. It is in him that I live, I move, and I have my being. The name of this series is Jesus Beings, right? So we're going to, hallelujah, we're going to disconnect ourselves from everything that's been trying to give us identity. You need to disconnect yourself from being super Republican, super Democrat, super white, super black, super this, super that, and say, you know what? No, it's just in Jesus that I live and move and have my being. It's in him alone because being a great political person will not save you. Being ultra this or ultra that will not save you. There's only one that can save us and his name is Jesus and it's from him comes our being. So every day when you wake up, you need to wake up with joy and say, you know what? Today I might live in this body, but my being is in Christ. So that there's not one issue that I will face today that God will not get me through because it's not not on me, it's on him. It's by his power that I'm going to live today, right? Depression comes when you face the world with your own resources and your own abilities. But joy comes when you understand that even in our weakness, he is strong. That even in our lack, he is rich. And our being is found in him. Church, can you say this with me? I am... A Jesus Jesus being. being. Come on, I like that more than Christian right now. Right? I am a Jesus being. He is the source of my life and my salvation. Come on, you got to shake yourself off and say, you know what? It's not about John. It's not about Melinda. It's not about Bud. It's not about Kyle. All of those names have limitations. But the name of Jesus Christ has no limitations. Matthew 19, 26 says, For with men it is impossible, but with God, what? All things are possible. With God, all things are possible. So if you are a Jesus being, that means all things are possible. Don't ever let the enemy diminish you to just being you again. Do you hear me? Don't let the enemy put your eyes back on you. That's why you get so down. That's why things get so heavy because he tries to block. I saw Jim do this last two weeks ago. Allow the problem to get in front of you so you can't see Jesus anymore. And what the problem really is, is a mirror. And the enemy wants to show you a problem and see you in it. And say, wow, I can't, do, I can't overcome this. I can't make my kids get along. I can't pay these bills. I can't put it everything on I again. But you've got to break out of that mold of I and say, you know what? I am a Jesus being. It is in him I now live and move and have my being. If you want to shout amen, that's okay with me. Because listen, you're not amening me. You're amening the word of God. When you say amen, it's not, I don't need your amen because I didn't write this book, right? The amen is for, the, for you to say, I, I, I receive by faith that word, and I say that it is so in my own life. Amen? Y'all better buckle in. I feel like I, I have some rest now. I can preach a revival. We might get out at 7 tonight. I don't know when we're going to get out. Did anybody leave? Did you see anybody get up and leave? No. Okay, we won't be here that long, I think. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, Verse 29. I'm sorry, let's go back to verse 27. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their work towards him and find him, though he's not far from any of us. For in him, praise God, man, that's a location. You've got to see God as a location, right? In him, Right? 
if any man what? Be in him. He is a new creation. Right? It's all about location, location, location. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold or silver or stone. So God cannot be contained to the religious activities that happen within churches. God is way bigger than our de than denominations. God is way bigger than religious practices, right? He was not made by man, but man was made by him. Verse 32. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the... Well, well I'm going too fast. God's, God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times, but now he commands everyone, everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. Listen to this. Open up your ears. This is what God commands, that everyone, everywhere, repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed, and he proved to everyone who this is by raising him from the dead. So as some of you know, I'm a police officer as well. And sometimes people have warrants for their arrest. It means that they, they've committed a crime, they have done wrong, and they have not been brought to justice yet, but there is a warrant for their arrest. And the warrant for man's arrest is a death warrant. We all cannot outrun death. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, <clears throat> excuse me, and then after death, what? The judgment. So while we are alive, we may hide in sin and we may run in sin and live in sin and refuse to repent, but there's a warrant for our arrest called death. And none of us can outrun these police officers, right? Because some of them... Some of today's police officers, you may, you can outrun us for sure, right? But when it comes to death, no man can outrun death. There is a warrant for death, for uh, called death. But praise God for this. Listen to this good news. Um, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, right, is eternal life, right? So praise God that some of us have turned in our death warrants and said, "Look, I'm a sinner." And, and you know what? I should, I should die, but I don't want to die. So here's my death warrant. I turn myself in, and instead of death, I'll take that gift of life. I'll take salvation in Jesus Christ. And what does God do with that death warrant? It's nailed upon his cross, right? And we're baptized into his death, and we receive new life in him. So, verse 32. When they heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some laughed in contempt, but others said, we want to hear more about this later. That ended Paul's discussion with them. But some joined him and became believers. What did they become, church? Believers. believers. You may not be a Jesus being without first being a believer in Jesus. It takes faith in Jesus Christ. It takes becoming a believer to be this new man, these new women in Christ, these Jesus beings, these Jesus followers, Jesus disciples, Jesus servants, Jesus lovers. And it says among them were Dionysus, a member of the council, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. Let's now go to 1 Corinthians 15, 45 and see what that says. It says this, the scriptures tell us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. So from our parents, thank you, that was for me, right? I hope. Do you have any flavoring for it? Okay. All right. Thank you. So from Adam, from our parents, we receive the life of Adam. We receive carnal life. Okay. But from Jesus, the second Adam, we are able to become a spiritually alive. 
when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, Lord, let this brand new lighter work. There we go. So, God created man. Three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Right now, the flame, stay strong, flame, represents the spirit. The wick represents the soul, and the wax represents the body, okay? So, God told him, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die. It wasn't their bodies their, that died, or their soul that died, but they became spiritually dead, right? So now everyone that is born to a man or a woman comes like this, right? We've got a body, of course. We've got a soul, of course. And we've got the spirit of man, but we don't have the spirit of God. And you must be born again. So Jesus Christ comes to the earth. So you get this from mom and dad, and you get this from Jesus, right? He is a life-giving spirit. So once you become born again, he allows his spirit his spirit to live inside of you, and now you become a Jesus being. You become as what they call a believer or a Christian because the Spirit of God now lives in you. John the Baptist said, I baptize you in water for the remission of sin, but there's one that comes after me who I'm not even worthy to tie his shoe. He will baptize you with what? fire, the Holy Ghost and with fire. So not everyone looks like this in this world. If you're born again, then you've got the Spirit of God living inside of you. You are the light of the world. And it's the enemy's desire at all times to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and to take away that part of you that exists in God now. But we cannot allow that to happen, okay? We cannot allow the cares of this world to choke us out. We have to keep Jesus Christ as our life source. He is, he is given us of his spirit, of his life. So to be born of man is to have a body and a soul and a spirit that can be lit, that can receive life, but to be born of God is to have his spirit living within us as well. All right, let's go to Colossians. I'm going to try to get through as much as the book of Colossians as possible, and then we will dismiss Father, I pray now in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit give us understanding of these words that your servant wrote, that they might speak life into us. We need to hear and know the truth, for the truth makes us free. So, Father, I pray that every ear would be open right now, and, Lord, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding to be able to feed your sheep from this word in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we are Jesus beings, and the book of Colossians is a great foundation, uh, and, and it speaks of fellowship, and it also speaks of our function as these new creations in Christ. Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, it says this. This letter is from Paul. Who's it from? Paul. Paul, chosen by the will of God to be. Church, can you say to be? to be? So as Jesus beings, you were chosen to be, right? Come on. You were chosen to be something in Christ. And Paul is saying, I was chosen to be an apostle. All of us were chosen to be something in Christ, so you need to find your being in him. Because it's not just enough to be called a Jesus being, there has to be some doing as well. But our problem sometimes is we try to put the doing in front of the being, and we fail miserably. We try to do spiritual things without first being spiritual. We have to have God's nature in order to perform the things in which God has called us into. Otherwise, it's just empty religion. 
absent of the flame, absent of the spirit, absent of God. So if any of you struggle profusely with your walk with Christ, it's probably because you're putting the doing in front of the being. You've got to be connected to Christ in his being before you can do the things that he's calling you to be. See, he says, first, I am holy. He says, be holy. Why? Because I am holy, right? He's tying our holiness to him. Let's keep this going. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. To be apostle of Christ Jesus, it means that I am connected to, he's connected to, and from. He's of. So he's a Jesus being. And from our brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossus who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. So he's writing to these new Jesus beings to tell them about this wonderful relationship and this new divine authority and identity that they have. It says, may God our Father give you grace and peace. So Father, we thank you this morning for both grace and peace. Verse 3 says this, so as you hear what Paul begin and Timothy begin to write and what they say, they're, they're letting you know that their doing comes from their being. And as you read the Bible, you must understand that it is a, a guideline and an structural book for your spiritual living. So he says, we always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people. So when people hear about you as believers in Christ, they should know about your great faith. Not just your political party, not just what your beliefs are, but they should know about your faith in Christ and the love that you have for God's people which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. Say this with me. God, God has reserved for me reserved something, something in, heaven, in heaven, and I'm hoping for it. Hoping. All right, come on. Let's start getting excited. Like, let that hope start stirring up that this isn't it, baby, right? Like, everything that you see, this isn't it, that we've got a home in heaven with God, and you're supposed to have a living hope that's bubbling up inside of you every day, and that's why it's easy to lay your life down, because you know that you're going to have to lay it down anyway. And my hope is not in just this world. My hope is in heaven, right? Verse 5, which come from your confident hope, so not just hope, but a confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. What? Reserved for you. It's got my name on it. No one else can have it. It's been reserved for me. You have had this expectation. Where's Elder Melissa at? Expectation. There's that word. You have had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. So what we must begin to understand is this. What, which news did you hear and was it good? Why are we sour-faced Christians? Why do we look like somebody just kicked our puppy? Right? Where is this confident hope that we're supposed to be living in? Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to tell you that this confident hope is not of this world. So if the bank account goes down, my hope is still up, right? If people don't like me, my hope is still up. If I don't feel good sometimes, my hope is still up because I have a confident hope that I have reservations in heaven. Come on now. Let's keep going here. This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives. Just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. So those of you that are Jesus beings in here, raise your hand if this gospel has changed your life. That's how you know you got the real thing. 
That's how you know that some pastor or some, some disciple didn't just lead you through a prayer and there was no change that really happened. If a change that really, really happened, your life should be changed. I'm not the same as I was anymore because I was dead in my trespasses and in my sin. But now since I believed on Jesus Christ and received him, I have a confident hope that my maker is from heaven and he is building me a house that's not built with men's hands. Where is the excitement of the church? The reason that the world doesn't want what the church has, because look at us. We are so that. When we need to be so this. We need to be so joyous and so happy and so loving and so kind. We need to be Jesus beings. So as Jesus was in this world, so are we. Come on. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Jesus would touch those lepers that no one wanted anything to do with. Jesus cared for people. Jesus fed people. The reason the world doesn't want what the church has is because the church isn't showing them Jesus. When you show them Jesus, they'll want it. Amen? Don't just invite people to church. Invite them into a relationship with Jesus. Because if they have a relationship with a Jesus being, then they have a relationship with Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? If they know you, then they know God too. Do you understand that? All right. Um, Heather, was it? I'm not an angry person. I'm not yelling at people. I'm just very passionate. I'm a very nice and friendly person. Okay. Who is first time too? I'm not angry, man. I'm just excited. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So, verse 7. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. So, our last series of 615 messages was about being servants. Right. And right here we see that people come to know Jesus Christ through servants. That's what he says right here. Right. You learned about the good news from Epaphras. So if you're a Christian, a, a, a Jesus, a, a Jesus being, then part of your doing is sharing the good news. Right. You've got to be sharing the good news about Jesus. We tell people about everything else. We tell them about restaurants. We tell them about coupons. We tell them about sales. But we must be willing to tell them about Jesus. All right. Verse 8. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. Oh, wait a minute. When you read the Bible, you also begin to see what's yours. Man, that's why you got to read the Bible because there's so many blessings from God in here that if you don't remind yourself, you'll forget about it. Some of you may not be looking forward to going to work tomorrow because of that one coworker, right? You don't, don't say their name, right? But I've got some news for you. Listen to what God does. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So this means, church, that you have the ability to love difficult people because the Holy Spirit lives in you and loves through you. So take the weight off self. The reason you're not getting along with people is because you're trying to do it yourself. You've got to say, okay, I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me, and he has gifted me with God's love, and that's what I'm going to be sharing with the world today. So not my love, which can be very conditional, but God's love that lives within inside of me. Verse 9. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you, say this with me, church, I have, I have. complete knowledge, complete knowledge. Of, his will, of his will, spiritual wisdom, spiritual wisdom. And, understanding. and understanding. All right. Yes, you do. That's what we have. That's, that was the prayer that Paul prayed for them, and that's what they have. I need to break in here with a little service announcement. We're not going to get through the book of Colossians. 
right? So don't be sitting there afraid saying we're still in chapter one. I'll probably just finish chapter one, okay? Everyone take a deep breath. All right, now we can fit more in, all right? So we'll get through first Colossians and then we'll probably be done, okay? So perk up for the rest of the message. Here we go. Here we go. We pray for you that you'll be strengthened with his glorious power. So since we have his power, we will have the endurance and patience we need. May you be filled with joy. How many can use more joy, right? All it takes is more knowledge of Jesus. The more knowledge of Jesus that you have, that you're a Jesus being, the more joy that you have. Verse 12, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you. Man, this is such good news. He has, and this is better than TikTok, this is better than Instagram, this is better than Facebook, so much better, right? For he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people. So when you see him say his people, he's talking about these Jesus beings, this new race of people that God has created in his own image and likeness through Christ, okay? Who live, what do they do, or where do they live? They live in the light. So listen to verse 13, where we came from. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. We live in a new kingdom, right? And we live in the kingdom of a person, the kingdom of God, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Verse 15, this talks about Christ being supreme as we wrap this up. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. We're talking about Christ right now, right? So if we are Jesus beings, we need to know the foundation of our being. Who is this Jesus, okay? For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. So many of you, your understanding of Jesus has just been too small. We need to make Jesus bigger. We need to magnify Jesus. And the bigger Jesus gets, the bigger you get. And you begin to understand that, wait a minute, I'm connected to him, that everything that is in him is in me, and what he can do, I can do. Jesus said, not only can you do what I can do, but greater works than these even will you do. So church, the more we magnify Jesus, the more we begin to see who we are in Christ. So he made these things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Say this with me, my Lord... My Savior, My Savior holds all creation, holds all creation together. together. He holds creation together. So if he can hold creation together, he can hold your life together. Right? You got these problems. Come on. Come on. We got to wake up. We got these problems that are trying to shake us up, but he's holding creation together. Come on. We are getting shaken by these little problems that we see, and we're saying, God, are you still there? Do you still love me? And he's like, man, I'm holding it all together. You're worried about your little situation that you're going through, and I'm a way bigger God than you're allowing me to be right now. I hold it all together, right? So the one that holds it all together, say this with me. This should be a T-shirt. The one that holds it all together... Holds me, Holds me together. Come on now. Come on. That's, that's a truth that should bring somebody freedom right now from any issue that you're going through. Some of you are worried about your kids that don't live with you anymore. And, and what are they doing? And uh, are they going to go the path that we taught them? You know what? Don't worry about it. You did what you could do. Give it over to the God that holds it all together. Amen? All right. So. Let's finish this. Verse 18, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. So New Life Christian Ministries is not 
It's a part of his church, but it's not the church. So no church on any corner or in any home is just his only church. His church is universal. His church is worldwide. His church is universe-wide, right? It cannot be contained in just brick and mortar. It says, he is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemy, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself. Keep it down. I'm trying to preach. You guys are making way too much noise about praising God about what he did, what I just read right there. Please try to keep it down. All right. Through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you, you can just keep walking right up there, Kimberly, please. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. Who is this God that would love a sinner so much that he would identify with you? It's some people you don't fool with no more, right? Even in your own family that you just don't even mess with anymore. But Jesus' love is so pure that he says, you know what? I'm going to die for you so that you can live in me. I'm going to let you have life in me so that when you have to be judged before God, he's not going to see your sins. He's going to see my righteousness. These are Jesus beings I'm talking about. These are people that have found their life in Christ. These are people in which nothing shall be deemed impossible for them to do because the Spirit of God lives within these people. They have their life in him. They have their movement and their activity in him. They have their very existence in him. I'm not trying to convince you to join a church or, or to be religious. I'm just trying to tell you that without God, you're going to die in your trespasses and sins. And there's a place called hell, which represents total separation from a God that you, that you might not like anyway. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Say this with me. I, I have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. Come on, you have to be tellers of the good news. Our last verse is here. I am glad when I suffer for you in my body, for, my, for I am participating in the sufferings of Christ that continue for his body, the church. So church, we're going to go through some suffering. We are. Verse 25. God has given me the responsibility of serving his church by proclaiming his entire message to you. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now it has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know, say this with me, God wanted me to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. You ready? Christ beings, Jesus beings, you ready for the secret? Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So we tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship to Christ. That's why I work and struggle so hard depending on Christ's mighty power 
that works within me. Church, can you say amen? amen? So listen, that's not some secret book I'm reading from. That's the Bible, and you all should own one. And if you don't own one, see us after church. Sopo, can you raise your hand back there, please? If you don't own a Bible, see her, and she will get you a Bible. I read to you from the book of Colossians chapter 1. Wasn't that delicious? That was so good because it's true. The word of God is true. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to open the doors of heaven to the Father, and that's only through Jesus Christ. So if you're here today and you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you are not born again. You are simply flesh and bones and soul, and you need your spirit to be set on fire for God. If you've been living in sin and you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that if today was your last day that you'd see God's face in peace, you don't have to leave here without knowing that for sure. Today could be the day where you say, you know what? I came in as a sinful being. I came in here <clears throat> as a sinful woman or a sinful man or sinful boy or a sinful girl, but I'm not going to leave that way. I have heard the good news that Christ died for me, and he wants me to be a Jesus being. He wants me to come to him and have life and hope. He wants me to have forgiveness of sins. And if this Jesus is willing to take away all my sin, I'm willing to give them to him so I can have this death warrant ripped up and receive the gift of life. So Holy Spirit, if there's anyone in here today that you're drawing into salvation, may they freely come forward without reservation and without fear. May they walk into this new life that you have given us in Jesus Christ. So if that's you today, you want to give your life to Jesus, don't be ashamed. Just walk down to this altar and we're going to pray for you and you're going to become a Jesus being, a Jesus follower. You don't have to die in your sin. But what, what I want you to do right now is just you can just say, Lord, save me right where you are. Lord, save me. Lord, break Satan's power off of me. I don't want to live in sin anymore. I want to be set free. Jesus, will you save me? If that's you today, I want you to take a bold step towards Christ, and I want you to be the cause of celebration in heaven because the Bible says that when one sinner repented, that the angels in heaven begin to rejoice. So don't you be afraid or don't you be ashamed. This is a cause for great joy for you to say, you know what? I want to be saved. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I don't want to be lost. I want to be a Jesus being. If that's you, come down so we can pray with you. Uh, if I could get the intercessors to come forward and the pastors and the elders to come forward. If you have any kind of need for prayer at all, we want you to come forward.